أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم Seek refuge in Allah from shaitan the wretched one بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful الحج وشهر معلومات فمن فرض فيهن الحج فلا رفث ولا فسوق ولا جدال في الحج وما تفعلوا من خير يعلمه الله وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى والتقون يا أولي الباب صدق الله العظيم Our topic today is Hajj. In the last lesson, we talked about the virtues of Hajj and uh, the warnings of not going for Hajj. When a person has the means to get there, he has no reason not to travel. <coughs> he is wealthy, he is healthy, he has no barriers, no impediments and still he is not traveling for Hajj. Then there is grave warning for that. Rasulullah Pak Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he could die as a non-believer. There would be no harm if he died as a non-believer, if he is not performing Hajj, when he has to go there. He is a very mahroom and deprived person who uh, does not travel to the house of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And we have heard of cases when, of, when we, we mention this, we say this when... Uh, um, with regards to this, only a person who is invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can get there. One of our mashayikh, he performed hajj 60 times. 60 years, continuously he went for hajj every year. On the 60th year, once he was sitting down and he was thinking to himself, I've been performing hajj for so many years, I don't know how I am in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is my hajj accepted and maqbool or not? It was these thoughts of thoughts were going through his mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired in his heart that, O oh Ali, do you call to your house anyone except whom you like? So this journey of yours was through invitation. I invited you because I like you. So you have been here 60 times, I invited you. You did not come on your own accord. So many a times, a person has the means and ability, but he still doesn't go. We have heard of this millionaire from South Africa. People told him, you should go for Hajj. He said, okay, I'll go. He went. He arrived at Jeddah airport. And people told him, you have to wear a ihram. And he said, what is a ihram? He said, oh, these poor people wearing these two garments, sheets. He said, this is a ihram. No, I'm not wearing that ihram. He said, you have to wear it, otherwise you can't. He said, no, I'm not wearing that ihram. And if you don't wear that ihram, then you can't go for Hajj. You can't move. Said, okay, I'm not going for Hajj. He booked his ticket back and went back to South Africa. He went to Jeddah, but he was unable to perform his Hajj. Even though he was a millionaire and Hajj was first on him. So, there is grave warning for a person who has means, but he does not perform the Hajj to the house of Allah. Today, we want to talk about Masail practically. Uh, hajj, how to perform Hajj and how to get there, what do you have to do? First of all, when a person makes an intention to travel to the house of Allah for Hajj, he has to make the intention that this Hajj of mine is solely to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is my creator, He is my sustainer, he is my master, he is my lord, and I have to make him happy, I have to please him. So I'm just going to the house of Allah to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Intention, sincerity intention is of utmost importance. So make sure your intention is clear. Number two, when you have made the intention of going, have made all the consultations, mashwara, everything, then when you fix everything, perform two rakats of Salatul Tawbah, Salatul Istighfar. That, oh Allah, forgive all my past sins. I'm going to your house of Allah. I need your forgiveness. I need to get there in such a state that you are happy with me, you are not annoyed with me, you are not displeased with me. So read two rakats, just Salatul Tawbah, when you have made intention of making arrangements. Like today you have made an intention that I'm going for Hajj, read two rakats Salatul Tawbah and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all matters easy for you. 
forgive you and to make everything easy for you, the preparations and the, choose the right group for you, the right company, so you can perform your arkan in the proper way. Number three, if you have any qaza of namaz, roza, zakat, and you can make that up, you should make that up as soon as possible. If you can make that up before going for hajj, then do that. Give your zakat what is due on you. If you have missed some rosas, keep those rosas. Missed some namaz and you can make them up, do that. If you can't, because there are so many and too many, then make an intention that uh, you will make their qaza and uh, make them up upon the first instance. As soon as you get the opportunity and the chance, you will give your zakat, you will keep your qaza rosas and you will pray your uh, namaz which you have missed. Number four, you have to if you have any debts on you, then you have to pay those debts. If you are unable to pay those debts, then you must seek permission from the creditors. Ask them that I intend to go for Hajj. Is it okay with you? Uh, if you don't mind, I'll go for Hajj. Inshallah, when I come back, I'll pay your debt as soon as I can. So, uh, um, take permission from those whom you owe some money. Because this is a very long journey. Something might happen to you on the way, people die on the way or during Hajj as well, anything can happen. So you must talk to them properly and uh, sort everything out and take their permission before going uh, to the journey. Number five, you have to make sure that you leave behind enough provisions for your family. For example, if you're going alone, you have wife, your kids, you have to give, keep them enough money until you come back and you go back to your work, your job, and you can provide for them. So they, you should not uh, abandon them and leave them poor and hungry. You should make sure that they have enough provisions to take care of them. Number six, whatever there is due upon you, your hisab kitab, take some friend whom you can trust, or someone, family member, your son or your brother, or anyone outside family, Show him all your hisab kitab and your accounts. That these are my accounts and this is what I have got, this is what is due upon me. If something happens, I die on your way, then you are my wasi and I make my wasi to you and you fulfill these needs for me. And then number seven, if you have any dealings with someone, uh, meaning daily, milna, uh, julna, meeting, meeting, and uh, sometimes it so happens that we argue, we backbite, we say something, accusations, things like that. Then go around their places, ask mafi for them. Like, you know, more normally when we go for Hajj, we go to our circles, our friends, and we say, well, I'm going for Hajj. If I've said anything wrong to you, please forgive me and pardon me. I know if I have hurt you in any way, please forgive me. And he say, okay, Allah ke ghar tak maaf hai, I forgive you. And you also forgive him, he forgives you. And in that way, embrace them. And then, uh, you must make prepa preparations for Hajj. <coughs> now, when you are going for Hajj, um, you need to know that uh, Hajj is of three types. hajj Ifrad, hajj Tamattu, and hajj Qiran. hajj Ifrad means when you leave your home and you get to Miqat, you make intention for Hajj only. And when you start your Ihram, you say, Oh Allah, I'm, I'm going for Hajj only. This Ihram is for Hajj. So you will stay in the state of Ihram until the day of Baqara Eid, Yawmul Nahar, the 10th of Zul Hijjah. On that day when you fulfill all the rituals, then you will be able to open your Ihram. Until then you will have to stay in your Ihram, whether it is 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, 25 days, no matter how many days. But you will stay in that Ihram until you complete your Hajj. Number two, second type of Hajj is Tamattu. Tamattu literally means to take benefit. And in, 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 in Hajj it means that you leave your home with the intention of Umrah. And you get to Makkah Mukarramah, you perform Umrah. And uh, uh, in Umrah you only have to do three things. Well, four things. Put the Ihram on, Tawaf of Baytullah, Sa'i of Safa Marwa, and Halaq or Qasr of the head. When you do these four things, your Umrah is done. And after that, you can take your Rehnam off, you can put your clothes on, you can stay like a normal person who is living in Makkah. Those Makkan people who are residing there, 
throughout their life, you are like that normal person, you are a Makki now. Because you have reached there, you've done your Umrah, you are, you are halal now. And you can use perfumes and everything, and uh, you can stay there. And then when it's time for Hajj, you, you put the Hajj Ihram on, and then you go to Mina, Arafat, Muzdalifah, you do your Hajj, and then you get halal on Baqarah Hindi. This is called Tamattu. Normally, pilgrims from England and elsewhere do this type of Hajj, which is called Tamattu, because it's easier for us, because we are uh, not accustomed to wearing the ihram and that libas for a long time, so we feel a bit uh, uh, irritated in there. So it's better for us if we just go there, do Umrah, get uh, uh, halal, wear our normal clothes, and then go to Baytullah Sharif, Haram Sharif, for the amount of days we have to stay there, and then we get for Hajj, and then uh, this is uh, Hajj Tamattu. <laughs> Hajj Qiran, when you combine both Hajj and Umrah together, meaning when you start your Ihram, you make intention for Umrah and Hajj both together. In the, this is the same like Ifrat. You will be staying in Ihram until 10th of Zul Hijjah, Yawmun Nahar. The only difference is over here you will go there, you will do your Umrah, Tawaf and uh, Sa'i, and after Umrah you will still be staying in Ihram. Because you have made intention for Hajj as well, you have combined them. So you will stay in there. This is because over here there is more ibadat and there is a long time spend, spent in ihram, there is more sawab for qiran. So according to the Hanafi view, qiran is the best ihram, thereafter the most virtuous is tamattu, and thereafter the, on the third number is ifrat. So these are three types of ihram. Make your intention first that which one you are going to do. Normally we do uh, the ihram of um, tamattu. So, you have made your intention, decided that I'm going to do tamattu. When you leave your home, you are traveling, and you have to remember that ladies, if they are going for hajj, they have to have a mahram with them. They must not travel a distance of more than 48 miles, which is safari shari, without a mahram. Sometimes people think that I'm going for hajj, I'm doing good thing, so why should I need mahram there? No, don't, don't use your logic there, follow the sharia. When Allah and Rasul has said you can't travel without a mahram, don't travel without a mahram. If you, to the extent that if a, a lady is wealthy and she has enough provisions, but she can't find a mahram, then a hajj will be wajib upon her, but she won't have to do the ada of it and fulfilling it. What she needs to do is wait until she finds a mahram. On the next year, the year after that, the year after that. If it so happens, that her death approaches and she could not find a mahram, then she should leave the money behind and make a will. That I was, hajj was first upon me, I could not find a mahram and go, therefore please send my deputy to go there and do hajj for me. And the waratha and the heirs will have to send someone as the deputy and for Rohan. So the Sharia has focused, stressed so much upon mahram that lady should not travel without a mahram. When you are on, are on your journey and you are traveling, we set off from home, pray to make wudu, pray to rakat, salatul hajat, and then leave. And on the journey, uh, keep yourself engaged in uh, du'as and zikr, du'a of safar, subhanallah, this akhara lana hada, wa ma kunna lahu muqlimin, wa inna ila rabbina lahu muqalibun, alhamdulillah, 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 Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar, Allahu akbar. And the rest of the du'as. Whenever uh, the car is driving on a, on a hill, or going down, recite tasbih and takbir, subhanallah, 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 when going down, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, when going up. When you get to the airport, and uh, uh, you normally what happens is, um, we have transit flights, we go from here to somewhere, and from there to Jeddah. Now the rule is that we have to get, before we get to Jeddah, we have to put the ihram on. So if you were to arrive at Jeddah without your ihram on, uh, then you would have violated the uh, sanctity of Miqat. Miqat is that place which Allah, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fixed that a person should not uh, go beyond that place without the state of ihram. There is a short diagram over here which I will show focus on this page. Zarada?
दिस इज हो गया जी सो दिस इज काबतुल्ला शरीफ अराउंड इट इज मक्का मुकर्रमा दिस इज दिटी एंड अराउंड इट इज अल हरम शरीफ हरम दिस इज कॉल हदूद ऑफ हरम एंड अराउंड इट इज मीकात इफ यू कैन सी दिस मीकात दिस इज आई एम सॉरी दिस इज मीकात हदूद दिस इज सऊदी अरेबिया दिस इज मीकात हियर इज मदीना मुनवरा दिस इज मीकात ऑफ जुल हलीफा दिस इज मीकात ऑफ जातुल इर्क दिस इज मीकात ऑफ कर्नल मनाजिल दिस इज मीकात ऑफ जुहफा एंड दिस इज मीकात ऑफ यलमलम नाउ जेड्डा इज ओवर हियर नॉर्मली वेन वी यूरोपियंस ट्रेवल वी कम फ्रॉम दिस साइड एंड वी गो ओवर मदीना मुनवरा समटाइम्स पीपल कैन सी मदीना मुनवरा फ्रॉम देर फ्लाइट इज वेल एंड वी क्रॉस द मीकात and then we come over here to jeddah so that is why what we say is before you arrive at jeddah at least one hour before your ihram should be on other so um in the saudi airlines they normally make an announcement that we will be approaching miqat within the next 45 minutes or one hour so those pilgrims who are going for hajj or umrah they should start their ihram okay so this is yahan uh, se this is jeddah and this is miqat Um, that is why before we arrive over here we have to have our ihram on so this is called miqat and before we get to miqat we have to have ihram ihram now moving on we have to remember that in umrah there are only two faraz and two wajib the two faraz in umrah are wearing ihram and doing tawaf of kaabatullah sharif going round kaaba sharif seven times seven times makes one tawaf seven rounds make one tawaf and the two wajibat are sa'i and halaq or qasr shaving or trimming the hair these are two wajibat now ihram before you put your ihram on it is masnoon to have a shower wash the body apply some perfume and when you are having that shower clean yourself thoroughly have a proper shower proper ghusl meaning shave your armpits and whatever shave your navel hair as well isko baad mein kar lete hain ji bismillah ir rahman ir rahim so we were talking about performing ghusl before ihram so have a thorough ghusl shave the armpits navel hair or clip the nails so that you don't need to clip them throughout the ihram because these things are not allowed uh, during ihram also uh, apply some perfume if you have long hair and this sunnah to apply some gel so the hair are not disheveled if you have to stay in ihram for a long time like rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam stayed in ihram for nearly 15 days because he left medina munawwara on the 25th of zul qada and he opened his ihram on the 10th of zul hijjah so nearly 14 15 days he stayed in ihram therefore uh, he he put, applied some gel on his hair this is called talbid in hajj labbada yulabidu talbid so the hair are not disheveled for during the because you can't comb the hair you can't apply any oil as it aisha radiyallahu anha says i myself applied oil to the hair of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with my hands and then i combed his hair and he put some sort of talbid and gel in there and i could see the chamak and the kya kehte hain chamak ko shine of the hair on the head of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam during his ihram applying perfume you can't use perfume while you are in ihram but before you start your ihram you can use perfume so take some perfume and put it on your body but the the khushboo will stay with you the fragrance for a good few days If you have a good perfume like oud or something, you, you will that khushbu and that perfume uh, fragrance will stay with you for a few days. Once I was going for umrah with Sheikh Yunus, Hazrat was in the hotel, and I said, Hazrat, kal jaira na umrah me jayenge, aap tashrif laenge. We are going for umrah to jaira na. Will you come? He said, Okay, I will come. So next day when he was ready, he took his uh, clothes off, and he was sitting. on the uh, bed and we were getting ready so i said hazrat ye ek tarah ki shishi hai free khushboo laga le 
Also eine von meiner Worte ist ja eine Kohle hier. Aber so I thought he would use this little bit and put it on. But has it put this stick on one side and he emptied the whole bottle in his hand and he rubbed it and all over his body. And I was looking at my bottle and this is gone. So I emptied the whole bottle in his hand. And there I understood that this is the proper way of applying perfume on your body before the haram. Because you can't apply a perfume on the clothing of the haram, on the chadar of the haram. But you can't apply it on your body. So you, you, you use perfume on your body, and uh, which does not show that the, the, the stain does not stay on the cloth, or does not get on that yellow, yellow stain, does not get on the cloth after you start your rehnam. There is no harm in there. So apply some nice perfume and uh, uh, start your rehnam. Ladies, if they are not on menstruation, they should also do the same. Have ghusl, wash themselves thoroughly, apply some perfume if they need a little bit, but ladies should avoid, you know, attractive perfume. They are going to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, deodorant or something which is sufficient, use that and uh, start your ihram. But e even if you are uh, in, in, on your haze or menstruation or postnatal bleeding and you are unable to uh, start your ihram, you still, ladies can do ghusl. It is allowed and they should do ghusl because this ghusl is for nazafat, cleanliness. So they should clean themselves as much as they can and do ghusl and start the ihram. Starting the ihram, once you have done this, now you have put your ihram chadar on. Now what you have to do is, you have to read of Tahiyyatul uh, Ihram and it is mustahab, masnoon or masnoon to pray two rakat Salatul Ihram if you can do so. Uh, cover your head while you are praying your Salatul Ihram. This is the chadar. We have brought this Ihram chadar to show you the viewers there and uh, this is my companion for a good few years. So you should cover your hair like this, head like this and uh, Pray your two rakats. And after you finish your two rakats, move the chadar from your head and uh, make dua first that, Oh Allah, I am intending to do umrah. Make my umrah easy for me and uh, accept it from me. Allahumma inni uridu al-umrah fayassirha li wa taqabbalha minni. And uh, uh, making your duas uh, after you finish your du'as, recite Talbiya three times. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. Which means it is must noon to read it three times minimum, and your ihram is started. You can either read your labbaik first and then make dua, or make dua then read labbaik, whichever you feel prefer. Recite labbaik then make your dua. So your ihram is started. Now you are in the state of ihram. You have to remember the men have to wear two white sheets like this. The lower sheets it's more preferable for it to not be sewn anywhere. Open sheet like this, that is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wore. However, if somebody wants to stitch one line of stitches straight and make it like lungi, because we don't have the habit of tying this all the time, so it will be more easier for us so that the satar does not open up, then it is allowed. In Mu'allimul Hujjaj it's written that it's makruh, but the ulama say that because of our lifestyle and uh, because the way we live and it's hard for us and many a times many people are sitting there and their settle opens up. Because when we are sitting like this or something like this in any posture, we have to cover ourselves really, uh, you know, with great security. So in order to avoid that, if you, if you want to make one uh, long uh, stitch from top to bottom like lungi, you can sew it in that manner. The reason behind that is that, you know, uh, if someone is very poor and he has only a small sheet, two small sheets, and he wants to sew them together and use, make it into one big chadar and one big, uh, then he is allowed to do so. So similarly, if a person was to make just one line and one sewing, it's allowed. 
مفتی محمود الحسن صاحب یوز تو ویر سیون لنگی حضرت شیخ رحمت اللہ علیہ یوز تو یوز تو یوز در مائی شیخ حضرت مولانا یوز تو مطالعہ صاحب اور سو یوز از لنگی ویچ از سیون ان بیٹوین فرم ون پلیس ہاویور شیخ یوز صاحب ہی ڈیز نوٹ ہی ویچس ویز یوز از پلین لنگی ویڈاوٹ این سٹیچز ان ان سو دیس از دی پرکٹس آف مشایخ ایف یو وان یو کان از الاو تو ہاو ایت سیون سم پیپل یوز سم بٹنز اور ویلکرو اور پینز دیز آر آل سو الاو If you want to use some pin over here to hold you onto your ihram or some velcro or something, then that's allowed. What's not allowed is sewing on the shape of a body, like sleeves, like uh, what you call uh, legs. trousers, legs, and uh, this is what is this type of sewing is not allowed. So if there was just any, it does not mean that you can't have any stitch on there. Uh, so if you want to use, you put some on the lungi, it's allowed. Put your lungi on. Make sure your uh, belly button. Uh, and whatever is below is covered. Some people, you know, are not very careful and their belly button and what is underneath is opened up sometimes. And if, if it's that case, that's the case, then Salat will not be uh, valid because it's subtle and it's necessary to close it below the belly button. So be care very careful uh, during the ihram. And in ihram, on the upper garment, it should always be uh, what you call um, while you are walking, while you are sitting, you know, use your ihram uh, uh, like this. Many people open up their shoulders and keep it open at all times. Now they have to remember that this opening the right shoulder is only during the tawaf. So other than the tawa time of tawaf, you have to keep your shoulder covered. You have to keep your body covered, especially during salat times and other than this is the manner of wearing the ihram at all times. And uh, you know, use some nice cloth and uh, keep keep it with you. This is the manner of putting on the ihram, and this is for uh, men, okay. And no sewn clothes, like jubba and everything. Also, you can't wear in the state of ihram gloves, socks, or uh, underwear, <coughs> or banyan. Kya kehte hain banyan ko? Vest. All uh, uh, these are types of things are not allowed. You will find some people who are Rauji Voras, Khoja Shias. They wear vest underneath and they wear pajamas, white pajama and white vest, and on top of that they put their ihram chadar on. Now that's not allowed because it is sewn, so you can't wear any clothes, sewn clothes during ihram. Also, you have no headgear, topi, imama. You uh, the, the male men folk should keep their heads uh, bare head at all times, and. Um, Also on the feet, you can't wear shoes or any type of sandals or slippers which which cover the upper bone of your foot. Um, uh, your your feet should be open, um, where where the hair is in the middle. यहाँ जो ये 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 खुला रहना चाहिए ये part. You can wear flip flops. हाँ flip flops, flip flops or any type of sandals in which this top area is open. You don't have to keep the Uh, the back area, you, you can't cover this back area because some sandals are such which hold on and they are much easier to wear. But I, I would say that um, uh, this is the Hanafi view. But according to the other Aimma, uh, the ankles should be open as well. So in order to stay away from ikhtilaf and difference of opinions of ulama and for your hajj and your ihram to be valid according to all four madhahibs, it is better if you wear flip-flops. Uh, so uh, there, Rasulullah used something like flip flops as well. His slippers they were not covering his feet. So make sure your feet are not covered with shoes or any type of slippers or sandals which cover the upper part of your foot or the ankles, uh, uh, according to the other madhahib uh, as well. So this is what uh, you have to uh, wear during ihram. Also during ihram, as we have mentioned, uh, you can't use perfume, fragrance. You can't use soap. deodorant or uh, spray uh, what happens is many times people make mistake they start their ihram let's say from Heathrow airport and travel on the plane so on the plane when they use the uh, lavatory toilet there is some soap there there is some uh, f uh, f uh, what you call uh, spray so they use that soap they use that spray uh, while they are in ihram so you have to be very very careful that you are in ihram not to use that You are allowed before you start ihram, after ihram, you should not use any soap or any perfume. Nor uh, you, uh, uh, should you, uh, you should avoid shaving, trimming, clipping nails, applying mehdi and things like that. This is what is uh, said. Also, when you go to sleep, you should not cover your face or your head. 
okay, if you are in a sleeping bag, uh, sleeping on in 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 Muzdalifa or Mina or somewhere, make sure your head and your face is open. Feet you put inside the sleeping bag, it's allowed. You don't have to keep your feet open while you are sleeping. This is some rulings regarding ihram. When ihram has started, uh, some things which were allowed before ihram are forbidden during ihram as well. And some things which are forbidden at all times become more forbidden during ihram. Like listening to music, songs and uh, watching movies on the plane or listening to songs on the plane, you are in the ihram. This, this is not allowed out of ihram, so in ihram it will not be allowed either. Mixing with the opposite gender and these uh, uh, things will not be allowed. Also, uh, those things, be some of things which were allowed before ihram, but in ihram they are not allowed. For example, sexual intercourse, talking with wife uh, in, the, in a lustful manner, desirable manner, or um, um, also we read over here, the second type of prohibited action are those which are normally permitted, but specifically in Ihram they are made prohibited. While these may not be sins in themselves, they necessitate penalties which act as an atonement for these ultimate mistakes. These acts include to use perfume, fragrance, even scented tissues on the plane, or on the body, on the clothes, to clip one's nails, remove the hair of the body, to comb, pluck, trim, cut the hair, or the beard, to engage in sexual intercourse, to hunt or help in hunting, to kill bugs, e.g. lice, directly, or asking someone else to do so. And these are things which will not be allowed during the state of ihram, and uh, uh, there is more wa'id for doing them. So uh, you should try and avoid this. If someone asks why all this, you know, why no perfume, no soap, and uh, no cutting hair, and no this, and avoiding all these things, we have to remember that Hajj is a pilgrimage which portrays love and muhabbat and ishq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And an ashiq is always engaged in the remembrance of his mashuq, his mahboob. So Allah is our creator, he is our beloved, he is our mahboob. We are going through his love. Therefore, while we go, then we should try and avoid all these things of, uh, uh, you know, because a, a person who is in love, he has no time for all these things. So if someone were to ask that, why do we have to wear ihram and why do we have to avoid all these things which Allah Pak has prohibited for us? First of all, wearing ihram is to remind us of our death, that one day we have to go to Allah Pak and these are the two clothes in which we will be going in our qabr. In our grave, we have to remember that. Number two, uh, the suffer and the journey of Hajj is uh, it portrays love and muhabbat and ishq. Allah subhanahu wa taala is our mahboob, and we are going to our beloved's house. Allah subhanahu wa taala. That is why Allah said, when you are coming, there are certain boundaries. Before you get to that boundary, take off your clothes. You wear what I want you to. You you stay the way I want you to stay. And we say, okay, Allah pak, no problem. We are there. We, we are there to do anything you want for us. And uh, to show this love, we, we are not bothered about our lifestyle. We leave everything behind. We leave our home, our children, and we leave our facilities, our food, our, our, our money, our belongings. And we are just going around like Diwana War and Ashir. That is why sometimes you are staying in the state of Ihram, sometimes you are going to Mina, and then to Arafat, and then to Muzdalifa. This is called Sahra Nawardi. Like we read about Majnoon and Layla and how Majnoon was in the ishq of uh, Layla and uh, he had become very weak and frail because he had no time for eating, drinking, sleeping. He was always uh, thinking about his beloved and uh, he was not bothered about his clothes. The, even, the, even this day and age, you will find many Majnoon out there after many Laylas and uh, you will see their condition, what type of state they live in. So Allah, uh, we are just showing our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are, this is why sometimes we are kissing Hajar Yaswad. Other times we are going round round the house of Allah. 
Sometimes we are going on Safa and Marwa, running from here to there. We are pleading, crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we get this love and muhabbat and ishq in our hearts and minds, then we have r- achieved the true aim and the goal of Hajj and the purpose of wearing this ihram. So Allah Baq is telling us that leave aside your dunya, leave aside your desires, your luxuries, your pleasures, and just come for my sake. I want you for a few days, just leave everything behind and portray and show this love and ishq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, that is why we have been told to put this ihram on and stay away from these things. Someone asked, can we wear a watch during ihram? Yes, you can. Can we wear glasses? Yes, we can wear glasses. Also, we can wear a waist bag or a bum bag on, in which we ha- keep, can keep our possessions. In fact, we should do so because we need some place you know, where we can keep our uh, valuables, money or at a time of wudu, putting the watch inside, miswak inside or any other things, little bit of money. So we, 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 we need to wear this type of bag that's allowed, there is no harm in there. So these are some restrictions regarding ihram. While in ihram, uh, you can't apply itr. There was a masala, can we use wicks and Vaseline in the state of Ihram? If let's say some injury or something, you need to apply some medicine, it's allowed. Vaseline, normally Vaseline does not have any perfume in there, no fragrance in there. Even if there was, it was minor, there is no harm applying Vaseline. However, with regards to wicks, because wicks vapor up, if someone has a flu, sneezing, and he needs to use that, avoid it as much as possible because there is some fragrance in there. That menthol has fragrance in there. However, if someone does use it, then the masala written in Shami is that if someone applies any medicine which has any perfume or fragrance inside, then it will depend on the person who looks at him. If that person feels that this person has applied medicine, then uh, even though it has fragrance, he'll only have to give some sadaqa. But if the person who is looking, he feels that he's applied some itra and perfume, then they will have to give them. them. So, in, with the case of wigs, uh, if, if someone has applied some wigs, we know that he's not uh, applied perfume, he's using wigs for medical reasons. So he, will, he, he can use that, keep it to a minimum, and give a little bit of sadha. Maybe 10 riyals, 20 riyals, 50 riyals, for any mistakes you might have done, give some sadha for using that wig. So anything of that type uh, is uh, what you call, uh, this is with regards to the medicine. If you need to use some cream, take some cream which does not have any fragrance, like E45. Uh, From here, we forgot to mention that before you travel, make sure you have all your medicines with you. If you are a diabetic patient, you have your insulin injections or tablets or any other condition, make sure you have all your medical medical medicines with you. Also, take enough money with you, uh, which you will need. Take a spare ihram as well. In the state of ihram, if you need to change your ihram, you are allowed to do so. If someone has a bad dream, his ihram becomes napa, there is no harm in there. Just go wash your body and wash your ihram. And if you have another ihram, if you want to change it, change the ihram. Some people think that once we put the ihram off, uh, on, then we can't change it, we can't take it off. If we take it off, the ihram will be uh, invalid. So th- that is not correct. You can change your ihram as many times as you want. Because you have started your ihram, you, if the chadar becomes dirty, some stains of oil or tea falls upon it, wash it if you can. If you can't wash it, take it off, use another one. Don't stay dirty. So you can uh, use, uh, you can't change your chadar of ihram if you need to, that, that is allowed. So uh, this is some conditions uh, regarding ihram. We have to remember that Rasul uh, um, sallallahu alayhi wa has said, Al-Hajju al-Sha'ithu tafilu the correct haji is one who he has a little bit of disheveled hair and some uh, dust and dirt on his clothes. So we are not talking about stains, we are talking about some dust. When we are walking on the desert or uh, there is dhul and dust flying upon us, we should not think this is bad. No, this is the dust of Makkah, Mukarrama and the dust of Mina and Arafat and Muzdarifah. You should think, Alhamdulillah, it's a pleasure for me. Allah, thank Allah that He's brought you there. And don't try and uh, stay away from that. Rasulullah said, Al-Hajj was shayith tafil Haji is that person who is shayith and tafil Hair is disheveled. He is in a state of ishq and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the proper haji. So, uh, anyhow, uh, 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 these are some masail with regards to ihram. When you start your ihram and you have proceeded and uh, you, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, Throughout the journey, recite Labbaik. Men sh- can, should recite Labbaik with a little bit of voice wherever they can, so, uh, uh, raise the voice. Ladies should keep their voice down 
and should not shout loudly, but they should read the big silently, quietly. You are you have travelled from Heathrow or in when in the airport <coughs> where you put your ihram on, you have arrived at Jeddah Airport and at Jeddah Airport you will have to go through the customs and uh, you go outside and your group leader will take care of you then you, you will be taken to the buses when you get out of the airport the hash terminal is vast try and stay with the group otherwise you will get lost and once you get lost it will be hard to find your place again so stick together go to the same spot and then from there go with the group leader to the bus and the bus will take you to Makkah Kalama. on your way to Makkah Kalama, sometimes it takes a few hours sometimes one, two hours, sometimes three, four hours, you will come to a place which is called uh, Pilgrim's Reception Center. Um, uh, normally, they don't let you uh, get off the bus. But what we do is we say to the driver, please, you know, I need to go to Istinja, perform wudu. So quickly, go and perform your Istinja wudu if you want to. Take a little bit of water. They provide some Zamzam water for you, bottles of Zamzam water over there as well. Take some Zamzam water, relax. And while the passport uh, system is done and the driver comes back with the passport, you have to remember that now your passport is gone. You won't see it until you come back uh, 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 to the uh, hash terminal on your return or uh, uh, on your return flight. The passport will stay with the mu'allim, the bus drivers, but you won't be able to see your passport again. <coughs> anyway, he will have your passport in a bag and he will take account all the people in the bus and they will proceed. You will get to uh, Makkah. Um, what normally we do is we try and do wudu over here. Because from after pilgrim reception center, Haram is very close. The hudud of Haram is time. <coughs> now, hudud of Haram is that area which surrounds Makkah Mukarrama. From Medina side, it's about 3-4 miles. From other side, 5 miles. From other side, it's about 10 miles. This small radius, uh, which we just mentioned, is called Al-Haram on this On this diagram, you see this one which is it's more dark. Different. That is called Haram. The lighter one is Miqat. And the darker similar is... Uh, is Haram. This is Al Haram. And this is Miqa. That is Kaaba Makkah Sharif. So when you enter this Hudud of Haram, they have some special uh, du'as to read and special respect. Now, this Haram also has special respect. It is called Haram because many things are Haram over there. Like just we mentioned, uh, hunting is Haram. Um, Cutting the uh, trees is haram. Picking up somebody else's property in there is not allowed. So because many things which are allowed outside are not allowed inside haram, it's called al-haram sharif. Also it's from ihtiram. It deserves special ihtiram and respect from people. Allah Pak said, أَوَلَمْ نُمَكِّلْ لَهُمْ حَرَمًا آمِنًا يُجْبَى إِلَيْهِ ثَمَرَاتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا الْبَلَدَ آمِنًا وَجُنُبْدِي وَبَنِيَّ أَنْ نَعْبُدَ الْأَصْنَامِ so haram is full of aman and innama umirtu an a'budu rabb hadhihi albaldati alladhi harramaha wa lahu kullu shay allah made it haram many things haram over there that is why it's called al haram al sharif when you enter al haram al sharif you will notice there are two pillars if you come from the side of uh, masjid e aisha and you see masjid e aisha from a distance there is a bridge going over masjid e aisha and there are two poles over there and that pole is the sign mark that that is hudud al haram Outside is Hill and inside is Haram. So your bus will go inside and you will see that now you are inside Haram. When you get to Haram, uh, recite inside Haram, recite Dua. Allahumma inna hadha haramuk faharrim lahmi wa bashari wa azmi ala nar. Oh Allah, this is your Haram. I request you that make my flesh, my bones, my skin Haram upon the fire of Jahannam. Allahumma aminni min adabi yawma tab'athu ibadi ibadak waj'alni min awliya'ik wa ahli ta'atik wa tub alayya inna ka anta tawwabu rahim O Allah, give me protection from your azab on the day of qiyamah and make me among your friends and turn towards me surely you are off turning and most merciful so make this dua if you know the words, okay if you don't know the words then just make it in your own language that you, everybody can remember that O Allah, this is haram so please give me the tawfiq to respect your haram and please protect my, make my body haram upon Jahannam. You can remember this dua. Make my body haram upon Jahannam and give me the tawfiq to respect the haram. This is the dua when entering haram. Now you are inside haram, your bus will go to the mu'allim and the mu'allim, mu'assasa, who is your number, there will, there will be some passport over there, there some karwai done over there. The, the, the person will come out and he will give you some wristbands like watches, red colored wristbands. 
So you have to keep those wristbands with you. On that will be the number of the bag in which your uh, passport is, like 2475. So 2475 is the number of that bag in which your passport is. So in the filing cabinet at the Muallim's place, your, there will be a bag with that number and your passport will be in there. So you have to keep that uh, with you at all times. If some accident happens and you f faint inside Haram or somewhere and that bag is on you, then the police will realize from which a Muallim uh, you are and where, where it is that address and he will immediately be able to trace you back to your hotel and get you there. So wear that wristband with you at all times. After wudu, take it off for wudu, put it back on after wudu, keep it with you. Now the muallim will take you to your hotel. You come to your hotel, your group reader will have your food ready for you, have some food, take some rest if you want, and uh, um, uh, 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 freshen yourself up from wudu. If you have the energy to go straight to haram, then it is good. Go straight to al-haram al-sharif. If you are tired and uh, you, you, you want to take some rest or your group leader gives you a time that we're going to go together and everybody should gather in the lobby at 10 o'clock in the morning, then you, you keep up to that time and gather in the lobby at 10 o'clock. They will explain to you and inshallah they should take you to Al-Haram sharif This is the way we do in our group when I go in the group with Canadians. That's what we do. So that's why I'm tell, 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 telling this procedure. What we do is then we take the whole group together. While we leave from the hotel, we have about 40, 50, 60 people with us and we are all reading Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, Labbaik La Sharika Laka Labbaik and then go oh, Alhamdulillah, keep reading Labbaik. Now, reading Labbaik, as I mentioned, through, should be throughout the whole journey, wherever you can, inside the plane, inside the bus, after getting off the bus, coming to the hotel, when meeting someone, greeting someone, hugging someone, or you meet a friend, you say Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik, you are both in a haram and you greet, you say Salaam Alaikum and then Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. So it remind one of uh, one another to recite the bay. Also, uh, you can read other azkar as well. Uh, third kalma, fourth kalma, astaghfar, durus sharif. Keep up with these azkar. Or if you get, if you if you have wudu, you want to read Quran, read Quran as well on the bus, on the plane, wherever you can. These are the azkar you should be engaged in. Now you are going to al haram al sharif, and uh, when you enter al uh, the haram sharif, you have to remember that when your eyes. Uh, for on Kaabatullah Sharif, your du'as are accepted. So, um, if you are, if you, there are two types of ulama mashayir. Some who would just keep looking down and walking, and enter Haram Sharif. It is better to go in Haram Sharif from Babu Salam, which is called Babu Fatih, which is on the side of Safa Marwa. If you are going from Babu Umrah, you keep going straight. And then comes Babul Medina Munawwara, Babul Hudaybiyah, and then you keep going straight, comes a big gate called Babul Fatah. And on that side is uh, uh, Jannatul Ma'la, Qabrustan, a Chapra Bazaar, because there, but it's been broken down now. And uh, if you keep walking, there is Jannah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came from that side, from the upper side of uh, Makkah Mukarramah, and he exited from the lower side, from Shubayka, from the Misfala side. So if you come from that side, you, uh, the first door in front of you is called Babu Sanam and its second name is Babu Fatah. These days it's known as Babu Fatah and it's written on there as well, Babu Fatah. So if you can go from there, it's better. If you can't, if it's very, if it's very far from your hotel and you have to give you along, then you can go from any, uh, any area. Normally, we uh, stay near Babu Malik Fahad. So when we come from this area, we go from Babu Fahad or from Babu Umrah. From Babu Umrah, you can see Kaabatullah Sharif straight at, uh, in front of you. So we keep walking down the steps and go down in the, the Turkey Haram. And uh, then when your gaze of eyes fall on the Kaaba Sharif, your du'as are accepted. So make du'as. We stand on one side and the whole congregation starts in du'as. And I have seen people literally crying and shedding tears. As soon as Kaaba Sharif, you know, it has uh, an inspiration, an awe. It captures you, it takes you back. And you know, there is nothing else, nothing like it in the whole world. You, as soon as you they see that Kaaba, that scene, people going round, round the Kaaba Sharif, remembering the Qur'an and all this, hush and bash and, uh, you know, pushing and shoving all, in spite of all that, there is special love and muhabbat. And you see that there is special feeling. And we have seen that people crying. And we stand over there and we make dua, Siddhi dua. And uh, for five, ten minutes making dua. And then when people are satisfied, they have made their du'as. What du'a should we make? Du'a, first of all, 
praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, you are worthy of all praise. You brought me here. I thank you. I would not have come if you would not have called me. I thank you for calling me over here. First thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Praise him as much as you can. Then send salat and salam blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as much as you can. Oh Allah, shower your mercy, shower your blessings upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is, it is He through whom you gave us this guidance, this Iman, this Islam, Quran, Hadith, Kaaba, Makkah, Medina, and this Hidayat and guidance. It was oh, through Rasulullah you gave us all this. We remember Him. We send salat and salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, we ask Allah for forgiveness. Oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy upon me. I need your mercy. I am in, in desperate need of your rahmat and your blessing and your forgiveness. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make tawbah in front of him, repent that I will not commit any sins in future. After that, pray for your family, for your wife, for your children, for your parents, for your brothers, for your sisters, for your family, for your neighbors, <laughs> for your locality, and for your marhumin, your uh, relatives who have passed away, and for the Muslims of the whole world. And at that same time, the dua, uh, to Masnoon to pray over there is that when you look at Baytullah Sharif, you should say, Allahumma zid baytaka hada ta'zeeman wa tashreefan wa takreeman wa mahabatan wa zid man zarahu mimman hajjahu wa azamahu wa sharrafahu wa karramahu ta'zeeman wa tashreefan wa takreeman wa mahabatan. O oh Allah, this is your house. O oh Allah, increase the honor and the respect and the sharafat and the awe and the inspiration of your house. And O oh Allah, whoever comes here for Hajj or Umrah and increases its honor, then you increase his izzat and his respect and his honor in the world as well and give him sharafat and azmat and takreem and mahabat and inspiration and awe as well. O oh Allah, protect your house. O oh Allah, protect this house of yours and Makkah Mukarma and Medina Munawara from the enemies who are after it, who want to demolish it, who want to destroy it, who want to destroy our deen. O Allah, protect it from all those enemies who are after it and take care of it. Make dua for Kaabatullah Sharif, for Makkah Sharif, for Medina Sharif, for the whole Muslim world. And in this way, make your duas. Also, make dua that, O Allah, at this moment of time, we have to proceed for tawaf. So we request you that accept this dua and whatever dua we make throughout our journey, accept those duas as well. And give us the tawfiq to do your ibadat, give us the tawfiq to respect your haram and realize the sanctity of Makkah and Kaaba and haram and uh, uh, stay here with respect, with adab, with muhabbat, with love and never to show any disrespect to your house or to the haram sharif. So give us the true adab and respect of your house and uh, tawfiq to do ibadah and as much as we can. After making these du'as, whatever you can, you know, you desire, whatever you can remember, whatever you need, ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after finishing your du'a, uh, move forward and start your tawaf. When you get to Kaabatullah Sharif in masjid haram it is better to go straight for tawaf without performing Tahiyatul Masjid. Because Tahiyatul Masjid in, in other masajid, it's not wajib, it's nafil, but in Makkah Sharif, the tahiyya of Baytullah Sharif is tawaf. So the first thing you should do is go for tawaf. Now, when you go for tawaf, you have to come in line with Hajar Yaswad. And uh, um, when you get to Hajar Yaswad, first point with your both hands, raise them like you do in namaz. Men should raise them to their ears and women should raise them to their uh, sh shoulders or shoulders like they do during Salah. So men, you should raise them and point them toward Hajar Yaswad. And if it's possible to place your hands on the two sides of Hajar Yaswad and kiss it, then place your hands on the both sides and kiss it. However, because you are in a haram, be careful. There, there might be some people who would have applied perfume on the side, on the silver covering of a uh, uh, metal covering of Hajar Yaswad. And there might be perfume inside as well. So be careful not to take that perfume on your hands. Otherwise, you will, uh, dumb will come upon you. So if there is no perfume on the, on the side, uh, clean, then put your mouth inside, kiss it. Don't make any noise like normally when you make kissing noise. Don't make that type of noise. Hajar Yaswad, respect the house of Allah, respect Hajar Yaswad. And uh, without making noise, uh, kiss Hajar Yaswad. And after that, if you can't kiss Hajar Yaswad, then if you can touch it with your hand, then touch it and then kiss your hand. Or if you can't touch it with your hand, you have a walking stick in your hand, 
not with the end which is you are using because that might be dirty or something is disrespectful so from the other side which is crooked which you hold touch it with that and kiss that if that's not possible then from a distance just point uh, towards Hajar Yaswad and kiss your own hands and then now you have to make tawaf you make niyat that oh Allah I'm, before you get to Hajar Yaswad I am doing the tawaf of Umrah make it easy for me and accept it from me Everywhere, wherever you do, you have to make this intention. Make it easy for me and accept it from me. If you forget to say it with your tongue, no matter. Because niyat is in the heart. As long as you know deep down in your heart what you are doing, then your niyat is correct. But if you don't know what you are doing, then that's not your niyat. And the, the sign of this is that if you were asked at that time, Oi, what are you doing? Then you should be immediate, you should be able to tell immediately what you are doing. If you have to think for a few months, oh, what am I doing? That means your niyat is not correct. Let's say, for example, you started Salat over here, in this room, Allah Akbar, and you don't know. If, so, if someone was to ask, oh, what are you praying? Yeah, what am I praying? Is it Maghrib or is it Isha? That means your niyat is not there. You should know what you are doing. So, when you start your tawaf, you should know what you are doing. That I am doing my tawaf of Umrah. As long as you know that, your niyat is correct. So then, you start your tawaf. Uh, uh, you, have made, you have made your niyat, you have made the dua. You have done your istilam, this touching or kissing is called istilam. You have done your istilam and you start your tawaf. You start your tawaf in such a way, like, can you see this diagram? This is Kaabatullah Sharif. You see this black line? This is where the Hajar Aswad is. Over here is the door of Kaaba Sharif. You come from this side and from here your tawaf will start. Alright? Yeah. And you will go around keeping Kaaba Sharif on your left. So Kaaba Sharif will be on your left. You will be on the right of Kaaba. Starting from here, you will go round, round, round. This area is called Hatim. It's a small wall uh, the size of a, a, a human being's, uh, what you call, Qad height. Uh, and there are three lights over here. That's called Hatim. It, Hatim is also part of Kaaba Sharif. Quraysh, when they made Kaaba, they shortened it because they did not have enough funds to construct it with pure halal money. So they shortened it and they brought the walls rather than from there, they brought it over here. And uh, there is some space to go in from here and out of there. However, during Tawaf, you have to go round the Hatim. If you go inside Hatim and take shortcut, then your, your, your round will not be accepted. So you have to go round and round and you have to come back on this side. This side over here is called Rukne Yamani, over here. Rukne Yamani, Ruk means corner, and Yamani means Yemen. Because on this side is Yemen, so it's called Rukne Yamani. And this side is called Rukne Iraqi and Rukne Shami. Because on this side is Iraq and on that side is Sham. So these two Rukn are called Rukne and Shami Yain. So when you are going around, what you need to do is start from here, Istilam from over here, and then keep going. Make sure your, your chest is not turned towards Kaaba Sharif, nor is your back. Keep Kaaba Sharif on your left. Don't deliberately turn towards Kaaba. Some hujjaj get emotional. And if they get a chance to touch the wall of Kaaba, or to kiss the Kaaba, or hold on to the ghilaf and the covering of Kaaba, then they hold on or they start kissing. So because of this emotion, you know there is a risk of your tawaf being uh, broken. So don't break your tawaf, just keep continuous walking round and round and round. If there is too much rush, then ladies should walk at a distance, rather than getting into the middle of the crowd in the pushing and shoving. So even though your round might be a bit lengthy, but however, try and stay, uh, stay uh, away as much as you can. So this in this manner, you start your tawaf and going round. When you come over here, this is called Rukne Yaman. If it is possible, and there is no perfume over there, Normally there is perfume, but because too, too many people touch it, then the perfume is washed away, wiped out. But check it first. If there is no perfume there, then uh, you know, wipe your hands over Rukne Yaman. Some people cannot wipe their hands over it, so they point towards it. Now pointing towards Yaman, Rukne Yaman is not right. Pointing is only towards Hajar Yaswad, not towards Rukne Yaman. After you pass Rukne Yaman, on Rukne Yaman, you should make dua for Maghfirat. Oh Allah, forgive me, have mercy upon me, pardon me, uh, pardon my sins, and uh, uh, accept my tawbah. And after you move from Rukne Yamani, 
the Muslim dua is Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar some people add wa adkhilna al-jannata ma'a al-abrar ya azizu ya ghaffar ya rabb al-alameen so if you can keep reciting that as long as you come to Hajar Yaswad again when you get over here to Hajar Yaswad then your one round is completed in this way you have to complete seven rounds every round you have to do istilam of Hajar Yaswad and start fresh so if you do not do istilam that means your round has not started you have to complete and start with your istilam and kissing or touching or, or uh, uh, pointing your hands towards Hajar Yaswad so in this manner you do seven rounds seven istilam when you finish you do another istilam this will be the eighth one so eight times after you finish your tawaf shukar alhamdulillah next thing you have to do is you have to if you can then go to multazam multazam is the area between hajar aswad and the door of kaaba this is called multazam so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to multazam and he held on to the door of kaaba and he touched his cheek to the wall of Kaaba and he just touched his chest, uh, chest with the Kaaba and he made dua and he pleaded and he cried over there. And uh, while he was kissing Hajar Yaswad, he was crying as well. When he finished and he took his face out of the covering of Kaaba, uh, Hajar Yaswad, he saw that Umar ibn Khattab was also standing by his side and crying. So he said, Umar, you are doing the right thing. Ha tuskabul abarat. This is the place where tears are shed. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam cried over Hajar Aswad, uh, near Hajar Aswad as well, and at Multazam as well. Make du'as at Multazam if you can. When there is no rush, it's possible. But during Hajj, there is too much rush. So if you go very close to Hajj, you might not be able to do so. But if you go early in Shawwal or Zul Qada, you will get the opportunity. So do your uh, um, du'as over here at Multazam. When you finish from Multazam, you have to pray. Two rakats, tahiyyatul tawaf. Now, some masail with regards to tawaf, which I forgot to mention, before we go to Maqam Ibrahim and Multism, some masail. First of all, it is wajib to do tawaf with taharat, cleanliness, from hadathi asghar and hadathi akbar. Hadathi akbar means janabat, in need of ghusl, and hadathi asghar means in need of wudu. So you have to be clean from hadathi akbar and hadathi asghar. Park. And if you do your uh, uh, tawaf without taharat, then it will not be uh, 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 v valid. You'll have to do it again. If you don't do it again, you have to give them. Because taharat is wajib during uh, the state of uh, uh, tawaf. Number two, the second thing is wajib during tawaf is covering the satar. Our satar, main satar is between the belly button and the uh, knees. And this should be covered. And uh, other than that, uh, cover other areas as well. But if some, something opens up somewhere, no harm. Ladies from head to toe. <coughs> Number three, third condition is walking. If you are not ma'zul, disabled, then walk during the walk. However, if you are disabled and you have to use wheelchair, someone pushes you, that will be allowed. You have to do from right side, including hatim, complete tawaf, <coughs> and two rakat tahiyyatul tawaf. These are some wajibat. And uh, um, during tawaf, huh? Istiba and Ramadan. When you come for tawaf, what you need to do is take your ihram chadar, which you have covered all the way, from beneath your uh, right arm and throw it over your left shoulder. Make sure this your muscles are open. And then when you start uh, your tawaf, in the first three rounds, you have to do ramal, meaning shaking a little bit of, and walking with the speed. Not running, but walking with speed and while shaking the hand. And uh, uh, this is for three rounds only, this speedy and uh, moving the shoulders. After that, you can walk normally in a relaxed manner in the left of the four. However, you have to keep your shoulder open throughout the seven rounds. After that, you come to Maqam Ibrahim after Murtazam, you come to Maqam Ibrahim and pray Turak Tahiyatul Tawaf.